Hi, I am Dave Seaver of Mind Alive Inc. Today I'm going to talk to you about using the David Audiovisual Entrainment System to boost academic grades in school and reduce worry and stress. This is my daughter Krista. Throughout Krista's life, Krista has used the David Audiovisual Entrainment System through growing up. Recently, Krista graduated with a bachelor's degree and she was the top of her class. She was awarded several scholarships and also received an honors award during those years. Currently, she is taking a practicum for speech pathology and was recently awarded the highest marks possible for any student taking a practicum in speech pathology. So why is this? How does the David Audiovisual Entrainment System help students perform better? Well, here we have performance curves of arousal. And we can see we have two curves. We have simple tasks and complex tasks. Well, often we get stuck in simple tasks. What would a simple task be? You can see here that simple tasks involve higher levels of arousal. What would the higher level of arousal typically be? Well, anxiety, stress, flight or fight response. These are certainly examples of higher arousal. And it would make sense that simple tasks would best apply to higher arousal. Because we're in a highly aroused state, typically we're looking after our survival. We're running or we're fighting. We're, we're punching an animal in the nose or we're running away and climbing a tree. These are relatively simple tasks. We can see, however, that complex tasks require a more relaxed arousal. What would a complex task look like? Well, driving a car in busy traffic would be a complex task. Doing math equations, problem solving, working with clients, writing a thesis or an essay, this would be a complex task. If we do these tasks under stress, we are going to perform poorly because we will be down on the arousal curve of peak performance. Another facet of human development that absolutely requires uh, complex tasks and a lower arousal is that of socialization. Humans typically have about 4,000 facial expressions and a few thousand more body language expressions and verbal intonations and so on. We must be relaxed to perform optimally socially. If we get stressed, our social ability deteriorates. All of the arousal, especially high arousal and low arousal, affects serotonin. Serotonin is a key neurotransmitter in the brain that has a direct relationship to being relaxed and sense of well-being. We can see here that serotonin is made in the brain stem. It comes from tryptophan, which is in turkey and other meats. It has long neurons that project to multiple sites throughout the frontal lobes particularly. It is high during rest, feeding and grooming in primates. It drops rapidly with the perception of a threat. Once serotonin drops low, it also reduces the threshold at which we perceive annoyances and fears. Have you ever seen anyone who's fairly relaxed and then something happens that triggers them to be angry or upset or anxious and suddenly they find everything is annoying? That's the side effect of having low serotonin. It actually keeps our stress levels up. Uh, serotonin converts to melatonin for improved sleep. As serotonin falls, Another neurotransmitter, norepinephrine, which is the neurotransmitter responsible for flight or fight response and aggression and so on, it increases. Serotonin also functions as a modulator of other neurotransmitters. Can you believe that 75% of the clinical population dealing with anxiety and depression and other issues have serotonin depletion problems? Serotonin acts as the brain's brakes keeping basic emotions such as sex, mood, appetite, sleep, arousal, pain, aggression, and suicidal tendencies in check. Serotonin also boosts happiness and social dominance. Serotonin levels were shown to be high in salesmen with exceptional sales performance. But also, females have 20 to 30 percent more serotonin than men. And this contributes to their reduced impulsiveness and reduced aggression. Also, College students with the most friends have serotonin levels 20 to 40% higher than the norm. Isn't that fascinating? 
The typical stressed out college student often struggles with low serotonin levels and may have symptoms relating to that. These symptoms could be depression, anxiety, panic attacks, premenstrual syndrome, eating disorders, insomnia, obsessive compulsive disorder, migraine headaches, addictions, or they may develop insulin resistance. Now, as we mentioned, when serotonin goes low, norepinephrine typically becomes overexpressed. Norepinephrine is made in the brainstem, and it projects all around the brain. It is quiet during rest, feeding, and grooming in primates, but it activates rapidly during stress with increased heart rate and blood pressure. It also activates on an as-needed basis, so as the task gets more challenging, the norepinephrine levels in our brains increase to keep us sharp enough to handle the task. High-risk sports also increase norepinephrine. However, norepinephrine will deplete when unable to keep up with the demands of stress and we fall into helplessness. Norepinephrine increases startle response and insomnia. It's also high in the urine of those with post-traumatic stress disorder. Norepinephrine also can trigger aggression and violence if the levels become too high. So the effects of stress, what are the behavioral effects of stress? Well, the brain becomes filled with racy thoughts that interrupt sleep and congest the brain with useless chatter, which unfortunately keeps the stress rolling. Key neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine fall off, leaving the mind feeling edgy and in chaos. Cerebral blood flow in the frontal lobes is shunted away to the main body in preparation for flight or fight. This reduces our ability to pay attention and also reduces our ability to make high-level decisions. The brain waves are slowed. This leaves the person feeling foggy, unable to focus. It reduces their IQ. It leaves them hyperactive, makes them moody, and often it just leaves people in this situation feeling crappy all around. The inflicted person also begins to crave carbs. Carbs stimulate serotonin, and the glucose has a tendency to stimulate brain function and make us feel a little more lively and a little more alert. Isn't it interesting that desserts is stressed spelled backwards? So, what are we going to do about anxiety and stress during the demands of academic performance? Well, audiovisual entrainment has been shown to be very effective in helping the average university and college student get better marks and have a more enjoyable life. The David Audiovisual Entrainment System consists of a small box in which there are five categories. We have Energize, Meditate, Brain Boost, Sleep, and Mood Boost Sessions. We also have a set of headphones in which there are pulsing tones, like sound like bump, 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 bump type pulsing tones are driven through these headphones. We also have a pair of sunglasses in which there are lights installed and the lights flicker at different brainwave frequencies. So what does audiovisual entrainment do? Well, the first thing we see with audiovisual entrainment is what's called dissociate and restabilize. When people dissociate out of all those fearful thoughts, their body restabilizes. In other words, they get out of a sympathetic brain type of system and they get more parasympathetic. And typically we will see their hands warm up. We will see their respiration get nice and relaxed. If they have sweaty hands, we'll see that they get drier. That's electrodermal. Muscle tension will go down and digestion will improve. We also see, of course, brainwave frequency effects occur. Whatever frequency we drive off those headphones and eye sets will duplicate themselves in the brain. And we can put someone into a meditative state or into an alert state. We also see that people can meditate using the gear very effectively. Accomplished meditators make high levels of EEG activity in the alpha brainwave region, which the audiovisual experience can do very easily. Lastly, we see increased cerebral blood flow and neurotransmitters. Let's take a look at some of the research behind audiovisual entrainment. This is the world's largest audiovisual entrainment device. 
And for those of you who've ever fallen asleep or had a dream while driving down the highway, you'll know about highway hypnosis. At roughly 100 kilometers per hour, or 60 miles per hour, the lines go by at about six lines per second. This imprints itself on the brain and pulls the brain into a theta brainwave state. Sometimes in theta, we will have a hallucination, maybe see a pink elephant on the road, and sometimes in theta, we just fall straight to sleep. But this indeed is a large brainwave entrainment device. Here's an example of brainwave entrainment. This is a study done by Kinney in 1973. The x-axis is one second across. And then we see two flashes per second, four flashes per second, eight, 12, and 20 flashes per second. Here is a flash, and then we have an evoked potential right here. Right about here, at two, uh, we have another flash, and here's a revoked response again. At four, however, we start to see flash response, flash response, flash response, flash response. And you can see that there's a wave setting up now at four hertz. At eight, we're getting a much purer waveform again. There's a little harmonic in this because they're using square wave stimulation from a xenon flash. If you use a sine wave, it will be smoother. But we can see here at eight, very clean. And in fact, at 12, it's dead clean. And at 20, we also increase the beta waves uh, quite significantly. Another interesting thing about audiovisual entrainment is it inhibits the brain waves that are at half the frequency of stimulation. This here is the typical high theta levels of an ADHD child or an ADD child with hyperactivity or a very tired college student. Both make high levels of theta. Both are foggy headed. Both cannot pay attention. Both struggle to make a high level decisions or executive decisions. And often both are moody. We can see in this ADD child, there is a lot of theta activity present at around six, seven, eight hertz. At the 30 minute mark, audiovisual entrainment was turned on at 14 hertz, which suppresses the seven and frequencies right close to it, so in the six to eight region. Very quickly, within the matter of a couple of minutes, all of that abnormally high theta is suppressed and the person becomes more mentally sharp, more relaxed, more calm, and less moody. The first subjective effect that a user of the David Smart system will notice is that of dissociation. Dissociation is a process that clears our busy minds of all the chatter and noise and thoughts and emotions that disrupt our daily routine and also trigger anxiety and stress. Within a few minutes, the mind will start to clear and typically within 10 to 15 minutes, the user will be in a deep meditative trance. As we dissociate, all the benefits of meditation are realized we will see that EEG alpha brainwave activity will start to increase, indicating a strong relaxation response. We see reduced electrodermal activity. Electrodermal activity is the sweat activity that is in our hands and over our body in general, and it's a real indicator of stress and anxiety. We see respiration slow down. We reduce our oxygen consumption. Our sympathetic or flight or fight type activity is reduced. We see arterial lactate levels fall off as well. And believe it or not, a 60-year-old who has been meditating for greater than five years is generally physiologically equal roughly to a 48-year-old. These benefits can be realized on the David Smart system. Here is an example of some of the benefits of meditation. We can see here that after the application of a meditation session on the David Smart system, at about six minutes, we see the hand temperature really starts to warm up. Warm hands are a sign of deep relaxation. We also see here the skin conductance level, or the sweatiness of our fingers, falls off dramatically roughly at about the six minute mark as a person dissociates into a meditative state. We also see in this slide here, forearm EMG, or muscle tension. Again, roughly at about the five to six minute mark, as this person was dissociating, their arms became very relaxed 
as actually did their entire body. Another key benefit to the David Smart experience is that of altering neurotransmitters. As mentioned before, serotonin plays a key role in the modulation of the brain and the reduction of stress and anxiety and promotion of the relaxation response. And as also mentioned, 70% of clinical problems involves the depletion of serotonin. Well, unfortunately, stress and anxiety deplete serotonin as well. What we see here is an alpha frequency of 10 hertz, which is very similar to the brainwave patterns of meditators. And within a, a roughly one half an hour, entrainment has increased serotonin levels by 23%. It has also increased norepinephrine levels by roughly 18%, and endorphin levels by 13%. Another interesting facet of the David Smart system is that it reduces daytime levels of melatonin by roughly 6%. This is important for college students because melatonin is a neurotransmitter that's tied to seasonal affective disorder and contributes to us feeling groggy and tired and sleepy throughout the winter months, just when we need to be cognitive most and alert most during a busy academic schedule. So when we look at increases in serotonin, increases in endorphins and increases in norepinephrine, we have what we kind of call a festive brain. Imagine a festive time of year and it could be Christmas for instance. You're all excited, you're wrapping presents, you're going to be receiving presents, you're phoning up all your friends you haven't hardly spoken to the last year, and you're saying, let's get together for lunch or for dinner or for a drink. And you're all excited and you're sharp and you're happy. The happiness and feelings of comfort and peace come from the high serotonin levels. And the sharpness comes from the increased norepinephrine levels. Plus, increased endorphin levels also help us feel relaxed and joyful and easygoing. These are all great benefits for the brain and the body and a good social lifestyle in general. We also see in the process that entrainment increases cerebral blood flow. Again, very, very important for good mental functioning. And it is cerebral blood flow that is diminished when we're going through anxiety. We can see here, believe it or not, cerebral blood flow peaks at 7.8 hertz, which is the Schumann resonance of the earth. Another thing is that entrainment boosts the peak alpha frequency in our brain. Typically, as alpha frequency increases, so does memory and mental performance. The best college students typically have alpha frequencies of around 11 hertz and sometimes higher. As we can see here, these students started at 9.8 hertz. During entrainment, they were increased to almost 10. And then for the time that followed post-entrainment, their brain waves went faster and faster and faster. Another important aspect of mental functioning and proficiency is what's called the alpha-3 divided by the alpha-1 ratio, or A3-A1 ratio. Here we're looking at the 11 to 13 hertz, the good academic alpha, divided by the poor performance alpha at 7 to 9 hertz. So it's the 11 to 13 hertz divided by the 7 to 9 hertz. And this ratio should always be above 1 for good academic performance. As it falls below one, performance is diminished significantly. And what we can see here, this ratio also improved during entrainment and for the 20 minutes that followed. Now, this is an interesting study, a second study that Tom Budzinski had done at the Western Washington University. And we can see here, during different tasks, like eyes open rest, eyes closed rest, remembering spans of digits, remembering spans of symbols, recalling facts and figures, eyes open, and recalling facts and figures, eyes closed. These struggling students who were getting tutoring all had slowed brain waves on these tasks, which is clearly going to interfere with their ability to remember their studies and to think and process and assimilate the content of their studies. Following 30 audiovisual entrainment sessions for 15 minutes, Tom Budzinski improved their alpha ratio significantly. And that is, that is excellent. But there's more. 
Look at this grade point average. What we can see here, the control group between the fall grades at Christmas of 97 and the spring grades in April, the controls actually fell roughly 0.3 GPA. However, we can see that Budzinski's audiovisual entrainment group improved by about 0.7 in grade point average, making a total difference of one whole GPA of his group between the controls. Well, what college student would want to turn down this type of success, especially when it is so easy to accomplish? Here's another study done by Victor Wurcherer out of Germany. What he was trying to do was differentiate alpha wave stimulation at about 10 hertz versus what we call a beta SMR frequency of stimulation. Beta being around the 20 hertz range and SMR being in the 13 to 15 hertz range. Beta SMR stimulation has been shown to boost academic performance and mental sharpness. So he looked at concentration and he compared it against the control group, as we can see here. And what he found is that beta SMR, remember, beta and SMR inhibit the half frequency of stimulation. So by inhibiting the alpha waves and the theta waves that are typically associated with poor performance, we can see the concentration following one session of audiovisual entrainment far outperformed the control group. We can also see memory improved a great deal as well compared to the controls. When we look at memory, we can see here that the beta SMR group improved significantly over the controls who actually did poorer on their post-memory test. We can see, however, that the alpha group actually excelled even more so uh, than the beta SMR group and certainly far outperformed the controls. So what we're finding, which also compares with the scientific literature on EEG, is that 10 to 11 hertz has a maximal effect on boosting memory. And higher frequencies, such as in the SMR band, which also inhibit theta, boost academic performance in general. OK, so we, now we know that with audiovisual entrainment, you can boost your grades, you can boost your attention. You can boost concentration, you can boost memory, just in one session. But what about stress and worry? That certainly plagues many, many college students. Well, here's a study that was done at the University of Texas in Austin in 2010. And what we have here is we have a waiting list control. We have an expressive writing group where they write about their worry. We have a worry exposure group where they are exposed to elements that trigger worry, and the, the intention is to desensitize to it. And then we have the audiovisual entrainment group using the David system. And we can see here that the David system was more effective than any other approach to dealing with worry. But we can also see when it comes to adherence, adherence is very important. If you have a great method of treating yourself, but you don't ever use it because it's inconvenient, then there's not much point in having that treatment protocol. Of course, the waitlist controls didn't have to adhere to anything, so they're out of the graph. The expressive writing group had the poorest result in terms of adherence because writing about your worry takes time and it's not a pleasant topic. The worry exposure group did better. And look at the audiovisual entrainment group using the David audiovisual entrainment systems. They had the best compliance to the treatment. And as you would expect, if you're having good compliance, you're also going to have the fewest dropouts. There were a few dropouts in the waiting list control, a high level of dropouts in the expressive writing group, just because, again, it's time consuming. The worry exposure had a significant number of dropouts, and the fewest dropouts occurred in the audiovisual entrainment group. But we can see from this data is that audiovisual entrainment boosts attention, it boosts concentration, it boosts memory. It also increases grade point average significantly, and it reduces stress and worry so that the average college student has more time to enjoy life and socialization and having a good time with their classmates. I'm Dave Seaver, president of Mind Alive, Inc. 
I hope you found this presentation useful. Thank you very much for watching. Please go to our website at www.mindalive.com for more information and to see the research pertaining to academic performance. And remember to awaken the power of your mind.